Welcome to IT Nation. In fact, happy IT Nation to you. Today, we have over 2,400 people here today. We're going to have 84 different unique breakout sessions for you, sessions where you can really, really learn. And we've got two kick-ass parties. So the way I look at it and the way I like to set up IT Nation and this event for you is it's like going back to college, OK? You're either studying really hard or you're partying really hard, and there's no in-between. <laughs> Got to have a little bit of fun. So I wanted to also welcome our VIP guests. We have over 100 VIP guests here today. And you'll see them. Their badges are labeled. Just make them feel welcome. And I, I got to tell you, this year has been an absolutely phenomenal year for me. And I've learned so many things, and we've worked so hard to try to really bring success to you. Initiate IT Nation 2030. We talked about, and you saw in the video, our pyramid. And our pyramid is our why. This is an image. Everyone has a mission statement in their company. And our mission statement is actually a graphic. And at the very top of that is partner success. And every one of our colleagues at ConnectWise, LabTech, and Quozel all focus on partner success. That's all we care about is your success and how we can create a greater level of success for you. The way we, that's the top of our pyramid. The way that we actually create this, though, is by building those base layers. The first thing we do is we understand best practices. The next thing we do is we give you software in the form of an expert system. But the other layers that are really important and the layers that we really focus on, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today, is how we do the rest, support, education, consulting, and community. And I think that's what makes us different from others. Because it's not just about selling you software. In fact, I don't even consider us a software company. I consider us a skill-building company. I consider us a, a company that builds success for you, our partners. And my whole existence, my whole vocation is to try to make your dreams come true. And what I wanted to do today is to share with you a dream that I had, because I think it has a lot of lessons. I have always wanted to swim the English Channel. Wanted to swim the English Channel since I was a little boy. And you know, you might ask, why, why would someone want to swim the English Channel? It's cold. It's the busiest shipping lane in the world. You've got, it's, like, it's like an interstate highway. Ships going north and south. Uh, cargo ships that have freight boxes on them. 30 high and 1,000 feet long. And they throw off these nine-foot wakes. And they're going back and forth and back and forth in the center lanes. And it creates this amazing amount of chop. And that's what makes it so difficult to do. I don't know why. I guess the reason why for me is I like to do things that really make me face myself that really make me go to a place where I just can't hide. And that's why I really swam the English Channel. I really didn't think I could do it. But I wanted to see if I could. So I trained for two years. I swam over 2,000 miles. And this is what I did. Miserably failed. And it devastated me. And I know how failure can devastate all of us, but this devastated me. I thought I was going to make it. I did all the work. I did all the hard work. I put in all my time. I put in my miles. I did what I thought I needed to do. I didn't know if I was going to try again, but I said, if I am going to try again, make a list. Make a list of the things that you did wrong. Make a list of why you failed. So I made the list the very next day, and I decided, all right, there's the list, but I don't know if I'm going to do this again, because I was absolutely devastated. My whole hopes and dreams had been crushed. 
And I know you might think, big deal, you didn't get across the channel. This is on the bucket list. This was the very first thing I ever put on my bucket list. I put this on my bucket list when I was nine years old. And quite honestly, at the age of 54, I'm basically looking at myself saying, are you ever gonna get your bucket list done? Because you don't have that much more time. Oh, maybe you, certainly not to swim the English Channel. So I made a list, figured out what I had done wrong, and I hadn't really decided 100% for sure that I was gonna try again until IT Nation last year. Until right back there, I talked with Jim Collins for about 10 minutes, and I told him about the English Channel. I told him how badly I had failed. And he told me, he said, well, what did you do? And I said, oh, I worked really hard, and I, 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 I did 2,000 miles, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I, every weekend swam 10 miles, and he looked at me and he said, oh, you worked hard, but you didn't work smart. He said, what you need to do is you need to seek out best practices. There's lots of other people that have done this. Find out what they've learned. Seek out best practices. And so I took my list, and he also said, you've got your list, make a 20-mile march out of it. And if you haven't read the book, Great by Choice, you need to read this book. Great by Choice is a phenomenal book. It talks about 20-mile march. It talks about, it talks to us, it talks to our business. It talks to us about what we need to do in our business. And I kind of told Jim, I go, Jim, this is, like, this is not business. And he said, it doesn't matter. Because you can apply a 20-mile march to anything. And a 20-mile march is just getting up and doing what you need to do every day. But it's not getting up and doing what you need to do every other day. And it's not getting up and doing twice what you need to do today and do nothing tomorrow. It's about getting up and in a measured way doing the things that you need to do to create success. And he said, you can apply this to your personal mission just as well as you can to your business. So I did that. I took my list. I put a 20-mile march up against it. And the results the following year were I made it. And it. And I tell you this in great humility because I, I couldn't have done this unless I had sought out best practice. I couldn't have done this unless I had an entire team around me. The first year was really a sole effort. The second year, I got a coach. And my coach got a coach. And I sought out best practice. And I asked anyone and everyone on the shores of Dover what I needed to do, how I could have success. You know, the water in the English Channel is super cold. It's like the day I swam was 64 degrees. And if any of you have ever sw gone swimming in any of the springs here in Florida or any natural spring, it's cold, isn't it? 72 degrees. So if you drop that by eight degrees and then stay in the water 16 hours, that's what you've got to do to cross the English Channel. So the things I had to learn, I had to learn best practices. I had to learn how to generate my own body heat. I had to learn how to stay completely focused. But mostly what I had to learn is what I want you to know too, which is I had to overcome all of my doubts and fears. I had to come overcome my insecurities because every stroke across the English Channel, your brain is telling you, get out of the water. What are you doing in here? Nothing I could do could get that out of my head. Everything about the English Channel was a challenge. And what was so awesome about it was it gave me an opportunity to really face my own fears, to really face my own insecurities, to really find out if a team could help me, to really figure out if best practices really did work, to really figure out if a 20-mile march really would work. And the results were phenomenal. Another thing I learned along the way was that encouragement is so important. I got about halfway across, and I was doing fine as far as everyone was concerned. 
But the reality was inside, in my head, I was ready to quit. I don't know why, insecurities, I don't know why, fear, pain, how about pain, how about it's too cold, how about you're 54 years old and you're gonna die, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and if it wasn't for my wonderful wife, Lauren, she was on the boat the entire time and she provided me encouragement. She knew every move that I made how I was feeling. She knew if I was feeling good. She knew if I was scared. She knew if I had doubt. And she was on board the entire time encouraging me. And I gotta tell you something. Without encouragement, you're not gonna go very far. And so today, I wanna talk to you about encouragement and how I would like to see you encouraged, how ConnectWise would like to encourage you to greater things. Because even though something seems like a daunting or almost impossible task, you can accomplish great things with a team. You can accomplish great things with best practice. You can accomplish amazing things if you truly, truly believe. So today, I'm gonna to ask for a little bit of truth. I'm gonna ask you to face yourself. I'm gonna ask you to ask yourself why. Why am I here? Why am, an I, why am an IT solution provider? What makes you get up in the morning? And why should anyone care? Those are the questions that we all have to ask ourselves. And I will tell you another thing. Most people think that's what success looks like, okay? But that's what it really looks like. It's never a straight line. So I talked about best practice. Let's talk a little bit about best practices because I think that's the way that we can all accomplish our goals. That's the way that we can all succeed. Last year at IT Nation, we talked about the path to success. We talked about that 20 mile march. And what is that 20 mile march? We talked about that. It's getting up every day. It's not a superhuman effort. It's something that every one of us can do. You just have to have determination and will. In 20 Mile March last year, what we did as a result of the work that we've done with Jim Collins is we've put together uh, a very great amount of information about best practices. But the first thing I want to do is demystify best practices. What is best practice? Well, let's take this example. These two guys have logs to saw. One guy uses a chainsaw. One guy uses a handsaw. Who do you think is going to win this race? Any guesses? The definition of best practice is putting out the least amount of effort to get the highest level of results. And isn't that what we all want? The least amount of effort for the highest amount of results. I'm gonna say that he won that race. I'm gonna say that that guy probably needs to go study best practices because as far as I'm concerned, he failed. Let's look at partner A and partner B. Partner A, high level of effort, low results. Didn't follow best practice. Partner B, lower effort, higher results, grew the business. This is where I want you. This is where we want you. We want you following best practice. So what we've done is we've taken and put together an entire series called Path to Success. And we've even put it out in workbooks for you and we have 10 breakout sessions here for you today. And what it is is it's absolutely our scholastic effort and our vetting with many, many partners to understand what best practice is in all areas of your business. Every area, product development, marketing, CRM, sales, provisioning, procurement, consulting, on and on and on, every area of your business. And we did this work 
not even thinking about ConnectWise, not even thinking about our software. We said, this is an independent piece of work that we're going to do to actually codify and understand all of the best practices associated with the IT industry, all aspects of the IT industry. So what we've done is we've actually turned it into KPIs. We've identified over 200 KPIs associated with success by following best practices in the IT industry in all of those areas. And what we're going to do with that is we're actually bringing that out to you in ConnectWise through a series of dashboards. And these, <laughs> these dashboards are going to be available the first quarter of 2014. The very first one will come out. It'll be this service dashboard. The best thing about this is that you will be able to have some control over these dashboards. You'll pick which gadgets you want. You'll be able to place those on your own screen. And by the way, that's not company-wide. That's for each and every one of you individually. So that means if you, as the knock manager, want to see the dashboard one way, but the help desk manager wants to see it a different way, or I am a help desk person and I want to see my own personal dashboard, it'll be there. So this is our result of the homework that we've done from last year's IT Nation. We'll also have sales dashboards, and we're just going to keep going on and on and on with dashboarding inside of ConnectWise. We're also putting in a report writer, because we've <laughs> because we've heard you loud and clear. <laughs> hey, look, we know that, and that, you know, that's my fault. I mean, what I wanted to do with ConnectWise is to build a system that would gather all the data. And we spent so much time gathering the data, we haven't really focused well enough on giving you that data back. So the dashboards are going to do that. This report writer will do that, OK? And this will be, you'll see the beginnings of this in the first quarter of 2014 as well. We've also added solution sets. What are solution sets? If you think about ConnectWise, there's objects inside of it. There's configuration types. There's service templates. There's project templates. There's entire service boards and the setup of those service boards. There's workflow rules. There's tracks. Think about it. Those are really the objects. And a combination of those objects can invoke a process. And so what we're doing with solution sets is we're putting together combinations of all of those things for various processes. So we've got one actually already out there for collections to help you with collections of accounts receivable. We've got another one that's already out there for client onboarding. And we're going to keep going on and on and on. The work that we've done in Path to Success, we're bringing it into the solution sets so that it's not just scholastic, it's not just we're teaching you best practice, but our desire is to actually give you a blueprint for it, in fact, give you a way to quickly draw that into your copy of ConnectWise so that you can have a greater level of success. And that's what solution sets are about. And I would encourage you to take a look at these first two solution sets. A lot of people have used them. They're phenomenal. They're right there in the ConnectWise marketplace. And Right inside of ConnectWise, if you go to your other tab, you'll see the marketplace right there. Go there, go to the solution set section, take a look at those. So we're going to add more and more of those. One of the objects that we're adding, though, is an entire service board. So in other words, what we've figured out is that so many processes are based on individual service boards, a collections board, a knock board, a help desk board. And we work really hard to teach each and every one of you how to set up those boards. But guess what? That's not the world we live in today. The world we live in today is, is there an app for that? Right? No one can be bothered with immense amount of setup. So what we're doing is we're adding service boards, an entire service board, OK? It's set up, it's set of statuses as an object that we can now put into a solution set so that when you click it, you boom, you have a brand new service board. Because so many of these best practices are based on 
you creating a service board for this particular process or this particular area. And so we've understood that, and now we're going to do something even greater with, with the service boards, with the solution sets. So you're going to see a lot coming this year about that. And this piece of work that we've done, what we did is we broke out our industry into all of the various areas. And I want you to look at this for a second and just look at this and, and, and I want you to figure out which pieces you do. So what these really are, these are practice areas. IT solutions, systems integration, maybe you're a managed service provider, maybe you're a software company, maybe you're an audiovisual company or a telephony company. Every one of these is either what you focus on or your primary practice area. But I can tell you, when I look at this, we've got a very small company here in the Tampa Bay area that provides IT solutions, because we are you. We still have that company. It's $4 million a year. It's about 20 people. Uh, we have a, a high level of profitability in it. No reason to ever stop doing that. And it's the way that we really are you. It's the way we understand what needs to be done to create success. And I looked at this, and I want you to look at this, and I said, you know what? Even with our little tiny company, I do ICT solutions provider. I'm a systems integrator. We do managed services in the Tampa Bay area. We resell hardware. We do a little bit of break fix. And uh, we resell software. We also do some custom development. So just our own little company there has all of these practice areas. So what we've done is we've identified the best practices in those individual practice areas as well. So this has been an immense amount of work for us and very rewarding because we feel like this is how we can really promote success inside of your company. And this material, the path to success, is now going to be trained not only by ConnectWise, but also by HTG and Chartech. So we're all going to be working off the same set of information, the same workbooks, the same best practices, the same 200 KPIs that we identified. So we're trying to spread this out. We're trying to initiate a, a global revolution of IT solution providers to make you more successful. Future trends. That's the work that we did this year. For you. What I want to do now is I want to spend just a little bit of time trying to help you see where this world of ours is going, because it's pretty exciting. I love this. Data never sleeps. Hopefully you can read this. 2.1 billion people are on the internet today. What does that mean? That means that we're all connected. That means that we all can communicate with each other. It's so cool to see someone be Facebook friends with someone in Florida, Facebook friends with someone in India and Sydney, Australia, right? And London. And, and it draws us closer. Why is that? It's because it's convenient. It's because we're all connected. And the great thing is, is that once we set up these systems, data never sleeps. There's over 48 hours of YouTube videos uploaded every minute of every day. Think about that for a second. It's pretty amazing. We've got over uh, 2,000, uh, 2 million Google searches every minute of every day. Things getting out of control, isn't it? But the main thing is, is that this is all based on technology. This is all based on what you are able to bring to to your customers for your productivity. You're bringing productivity to them. And by the way, $3.8 trillion is what, that's what's going to be spent this next year, 2014, on IT. $3.8 trillion. That sounds like a pretty good opportunity to me. What's driving this is technology, processing power. Processing power is going through the roof. What's so cool about this is that a child's PlayStation of today is more powerful than a supercomputer of 1996. Think about that for a second. 
Think about how far we've come. And then I want you to think about if we've come that far since 1996, how far will we go on the next year, the next two years, the next three years, the next four years? What's out there for us? It's not just processing power either. Processing power, yes, it's getting faster and faster. It's going through the roof. But storage is becoming cheaper. Storage is almost, what, someone help me out here. What does is, what is a one uh, uh, terabyte drive cost anymore? I don't even know. Huh? 50 bucks. A terabyte, okay? I got the, my dad was branch manager for IBM. So what that meant is it meant we could get the first PC in the Tampa Bay area. We didn't, we got the second. But it had a 10 megabyte hard drive on it. And I'll tell you, I thought I would never fill up that 10 megabyte hard drive. I didn't think there was any way. We had 256K of memory. I thought, you don't need that. No one's ever going to need that. Who needs that? Look at where we've come in such a short amount of time. Storage, processing power, and bandwidth. Do you even, how many people actually hardwire plug in to a network anymore versus going wireless? How many people hardwire themselves in? You know, if I asked that question last year, half the hands in the room would have gone up. And if I asked the question the year before, all the hands would have gone up. We don't even notice this happening. This is happening right underneath our noses. And it's these three different technologies that are merging to cause digital accelerators. And if you were with us at IT Nation two years ago, you would have heard Daniel Burris talk about this. This is what's really driving this new technology, this new world that we're in. Productivity as a result of it is going through the roof. If you look at productivity by decade, it's absolutely going through the roof. In fact, where we are today with productivity, the measurement of productivity is actually higher than where we were in the Industrial Revolution. And in our history books, we all realize that was like a massive boom in technology at the time, technology at their time, and look at what it created. It created a immense amount of pro pro uh, productivity and that's where we are today. We're actually above that. And if we actually map this, it looks something like that if you draw a line through all of it. So it looks like it's flat. It's, it's, it's slowly edging up. But what's happening is because of the digital accelerators, we're actually ramping up above that. And as we go into the next decade and the one after that, we're actually going to see a higher and higher and higher level of productivity. And so that gap right there, I like to call that the technology boost. And who's bringing that technology boost to this world? It's all of you. That's your obligation. That's your responsibility. You're delivering this to the world. You have an incredible vocation you actually, in my opinion, have an incredible responsibility. Because if we can help you do this, you bring so much good to the world. And I don't want to go too far with this, but the reality is, if we're all connected, and if data never sleeps, and if we continue to see all of these digital accelerators pushing us forward, pushing us forward, there's really not any problem in this world that we cannot solve. Because the problems that we've always had are lack of information, isolation of information, people not feeling connected with each other, and an inability to understand what's really going on. And so you've got fractionalization. You're not able to move goods and services freely throughout the globe. These have just all been bottlenecks that have always been in place that have caused a lot of the problems that we have today. And a lot of those problems that we have today go away when everyone's connected and when data moves freely and when technology is cheap and when you deliver that productivity to everyone. So this is an immense responsibility. And here's, the, here's what we, we surveyed you, and here's how you feel about your, your position on growth in your business for the next year. 38% of you expect hyper-growth. 
I agree. 51% of you think you're going to have moderate growth. But if you look, the people who think they're going to maintain or it's going to be a challenging environment, very small percentage of you are feeling that way. I think it's because of all the things we just talked about. I think that you sense that. I think we all know that. I think that we see that this is the world that we're heading into. And I think that we're starting to understand the immense obligation that we have as a result of it. So what are we doing about it here at ConnectWise? What we're doing about it is we're putting together the modern office suite. So the modern office suite, what is that? I mean, if you think about Microsoft Office, you've got Word, you've got Excel, and you've got PowerPoint, right? They all integrate with each other, and it's an awesome product because it's so integrated. Well, when you think about modern office, think about the same thing. It's just ConnectWise, LabTech, and Quozel, fully integrated. And yes, we're not fully integrated today, but we are working very fast towards that. We're going to show you some of the progress that we've made today. All of these products together, integrated, what does that really create? It creates massive integration, but what we're able to do with that is we're also to, able to create a lot of innovation for you. And that's what we get excited about, is really driving that innovation curve up. Now, I'm going to tell you that it doesn't matter if you want to be a Modern Office partner. I don't care. We're very dedicated to APIs. We're very dedicated to embracing any and everyone that wants to integrate to ConnectWise. And we work hard to make that a reality. We're integrated, ConnectWise is integrated to more products than any other solution out there. And we make it easy. And we'll talk about the APIs and our new software development kit in a little bit. This is the puzzle that we're working on right now. And we talked about this last year. But the whole idea is you've got your client's current environment, and then you've got the set of standards that you want to support, right? We know that they, they might not have the right server. They might not have the right backup system. We want them to get on our set of standards, right? So what we've done is we've actually created a standardization engine, something that will go across, scan the network, and understand where your supported standards are not being met. And the idea is for us to find those places where it's not met, servers out of warranty, uh, uh, this machine doesn't have enough memory, this CPU on this workstation isn't fast enough, and we don't want to support that. Instead of finding that out the hard way, we're making a standardization engine for you to be able to automatically understand and discover these things. And the idea is for your client's environment to meet your standards and for us to bring that to you. And so what I want to show you today is a little bit of that. And we've got Bill Morgan with us here to help us take a look at that. Thank you, Arnie. All right, so what I want to do is we saw this great concept of standardization. And what I want to do is I want to show you that in reality and show you LabTech's standards engine. So what I'm doing now is we're actually going to evaluate one of our clients and see if anything deviates from the standard. So we have things like processor that we can look at, uh, memory, hard drive space, and then one of the key ones is, is warranty expirations, right? Is anything out of warranty? So what I want to do is I'm going to evaluate this client and see if the, these are just the things that are, that are deviations. So it looks like that's good. And now while all of these are important in their own right, there's one that's really important that I want to focus on. And that's our exchange server being out of warranty. Now if anything on that list needs a priority upgrade, that's probably going to be the one. So the best thing that we need to do now is we need to get this into the sales process. And what better way to do that than to create an opportunity in ConnectWise. So let's go ahead and do that. Easy enough. Opportunities created in ConnectWise for us. Let's hop over and take a look. All right, so this is really nice. It actually creates the opportunity for us. It documents the customer so we know exactly who this is for. It actually sets it up as a quote request. We know where it came from. It's even added all of our products as line items on the opportunity. So it's great. Now, I need to get this quote out to the customer. And of course, what's the best way to do that is with Quozel. Now, this is really cool. So we've actually added Quozel inside of ConnectWise. It's pretty cool. 
All right, now, one of the really neat things that Coolzo has the ability to do is actually look at the opportunities in ConnectWise and generate what we call a demand. It's really just giving your, your sales reps a list of, here's what you need to go and quote. So I'm going to take that demand that we generated from the opportunity, and I'm going to go ahead and quote this out. I want to get this out in front of uh, Stephen over there, Chris Craft. So we've got all our information here, so we're ready to go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and prepare this quote. There we go. There we go. Now, through templates inside of Quozal, I can do something really cool here. So the, the, we started with a warranty upgrade. Now, to be fair, we're upgrading a existing hardware on an old version of Exchange. And so we're going to give them that option. But now I can add another option. And this is going to be my recommendation. I'm actually going to recommend we upgrade the server. We put some new hardware and some updated software for this client. Now this is also news. We have the ability now to build this out inside of our template so it looks just like a project. So all our phases are there. We're going to set the server up. We're actually going to install a server. And then we're going to do some training, probably one of the most important parts. So what I want to do now is go ahead and publish this quote so we can deliver it out to Steven. So we got a little mini game here that's going to kick off for us. Keeps your sales guys entertained while their quotes are publishing. And what this is doing for us is actually generating a link on what we call Order Porter. It's going to give us an email format that we can send out to the customer so we don't have to send those huge PDF files. So our link's all sent. We're all ready to go. Our quote's all prepared for us. Seems pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and send this over to Steven. And we're going to take a look and see what, uh, what Steven has to say and, and what he's going to choose. All right. So I'm Steven. I actually have this quote right here in front of me. All I have to do at this point is to accept it, sign it, and then say that I'm accepting it. But you got to hit the button. Oh, I knew this would happen at some point. I think my fingers are too cold. <laughs> no problem. All right, one click, you get to accept it. I did. I get it. It hit it. Yep. <laughs> All right. So my eyes are not good anymore. Too much time in the water, Arnie. <laughs> All right. Let's go back and take a look at ConnectWise. <laughs> so it's great. So for those that are using Quills, you've seen this before. But for those who haven't, this is actually something really cool that happens. So once that quote's actually accepted, and it's great that you can actually take your iPad out there and have your sales reps in front and say, look, here's your quote. You're ready. Go ahead and sign it, and, and we're ready to go. Now, in ConnectWise, what's going to happen is it's actually going to process this quote. We already set the status to 1, so we're ready to go. And the products that he selected, the options he chose, are now line items on our opportunity. So they're on our forecast. All our products are here. Now, the sales part of the process is really done. And what we need to do, and always the challenge here, is we need to get this over to service delivery. And so how do we do that? Well, let's convert it. And what we're going to do for this one is we're actually going to convert it into a project. We're going to create a brand new project for this. We're going to bring our documents over. Always nice to have. Everything that we were working on, everything that was in our quote, is now all line items for our project. Let's go ahead and finish that up. We're going to let ConnectWise go ahead and generate our project for us. What's great about this is we actually have quoted it in a project template format, and it's coming all the way through the system to the project in one fell swoop that way. So what's awesome to me about this is that the way you quote it is the way that you deliver it. And so that disconnect between what you quote and how you quote it is no longer there. It actually becomes an operational blueprint that gets passed all the way through these systems and turns into a project. Now, this is kind of where the magic happens. So now we've got our project created. 
And if we take a look at the work plan, what you're going to see is that exactly how we quoted it is exactly how it shows up on our work plan. So everything we need is here. All our phases are laid out for us. We've got our products in line for us. We even have all of our budget hours, our projects ready to go. So exactly as we showed it to the customer is exactly how our service teams are going to deliver it. And that's how we help you implement standards. Thank you, Bill. Bill Morgan, thank you very much. And let me tell you, we're going really far with the project module. Uh, we're putting in project enhancements. You'll see them in early 2014, and they are phenomenal. Uh, I'm going to cover it in just a little bit, but we've also added baselining, OK? We've added baselining to projects. We've also added the ability for you to manage the schedule conflicts that naturally come up in project management. So the system is always going to be looking for schedule conflicts that have been created anywhere else in ConnectWise, anywhere else in ConnectWise, and it will automatically bring that up to you and give you an opportunity to resolve those conflicts and help you resolve those conflicts. We've also added an edit mode to the project work plan. So what that means is we've basically taken your project work plan and we've turned it into a spreadsheet. The beauty of this is that I can, from this one view, I can actually change any of the tickets in the project right from this view. I can drag and drop, just like we do today, with any of these phases or projects. You can update your budgets very quickly. But one of the great things that we've added here as well throughout the entire system is the ability for your people to tell you where they think they are as far as completion on each one of these line items of each one of these tickets in the project. By the way, this, the same concept works in tickets uh, as well. So what we're doing is we're asking every single time a person enters time on any ticket, on any project, we're giving them the opportunity to tell us what percentage complete they are, how far are you along on this. And what that does is it allows project managers to now know exactly what percentage complete they are on that project. And it lets them figure out if they are going to go over or under way early, so it's like an early warning system uh, for project managers. Now let me show you a couple more things about the new user interface. Just so you can see this, this new user interface will be rolled out throughout the entire application during 2014. So the only parts of the application that we will not have the new user interface on are going to be the setup tables. So I hope you can forgive us on that. But the project module, companies, contacts, everything will have this new look and feel. And the beauty of this is it'll work in any browser. You'll still have your client. We're not taking that away. But we're giving the option to run this on any browser. So that means you can run it on a Mac. That means you can run it on an iPad. And this design is all finger friendly so that it will work on an iPad, OK? Maybe I won't be able to hit the buttons, but hopefully you will. Need glasses. OK. All right, so this is the, comp this is the uh, new company view. Not really very different. And we are a little bit worried about making it too different for you. So I want to point out that we're really not making th these things very different. Contacts are going to look like this. And by the way, we're going to be soliciting your feedback before we finalize any of these, so we'll be soliciting your feedback. We've been getting great feedback from you, and we're going to put that into a formal way so that we can really get even more feedback. But you'll see that it's not really significantly different, but it is a cleaned up look. It is finger friendly, and it will be browser available. So we talked about projects. Let's go ahead and take a look at projects here and look at that work plan. Again, the ability to have a baseline, OK? A baseline on your project is very important. The ability to have predecessors. So we're bringing in predecessors into projects. The ability for you to manage schedule conflicts. So we'll actually be able to give you a way to manage those schedule conflicts. The project will always be looking for those conflicts. And that means if someone schedules someone on top of your 
technician, your person that you've deployed out in the field, it's also going to give you that scheduled conflict. When you open this up, it's going to let you know there's a conflict. I get excited about the percentage complete, but mostly I get excited about this edit view. So if you take a look at this, this is what we heard from you. We heard it takes too long to open a ticket and change the name of that uh, subject line on the ticket. So we brought it right out here. It takes too long to change the status, so we brought it out right here. Uh, we need predecessors. We put it in. Uh, we want to be able to manage the resources right from here, so you're able to just click and add those resources right here. You don't have to open the ticket anymore. You're able to modify your budget hours. Of course, you're able to do that now. But I love this part. Not only are we going to get the feedback from the people in the field who are doing the work as to how far, what percentage complete that they think that they are, but we're also going to allow the project manager, obviously, to override that and to very quickly say, here's where I think we are on this project. This is going to give you a lot of control. The other piece that I get pretty excited about is for those of you that have products, products are now able to be put directly into a phase. So you can associate projects with a very specific phase of it. And in here, you'll be able to see how many of those products have actually shipped. So imagine a project manager who is waiting on products to be delivered to be able to start the project. If you've got the ConnectWise procurement module, you're checking your products in. It's telling you which ones have been shipped. So you know when it's time to actually start this project. We're bringing that information directly to you. I would say the one that I'm most nervous about is the new ticket screen. We did show this last year, but I want to show it again. This is the only one that we felt that we should radically change the layout. So hopefully, all the same information is there. It's just in a slightly different spot. But what we want to do is actually create a formal problem area so that that is no longer in the body of the ticket, but there's a formal problem area here. We wanted to bring configurations directly up to you. We're going to be adding the ability, we add the ability for you to be able to declare that you must have a configuration associated with a ticket. And that won't be global. That'll be service board by service board. So in some cases, it might need to have a configuration. In some cases, it might not need to have a configuration. But we're also bringing that up closer, up higher, for you to be able to see that. But the idea is just a, a simpler, cleaner look. It's not tremendously different, but it is, again, browser-based, finger-friendly, and we think pretty awesome. You'll also be able to have dependencies on tickets. Individual tickets. You don't have to have a project to have dependencies. We're going to let you draw dependencies between tickets on a board. So that's some of what we're doing. Uh, and what you'll see, and some of you already have this, some of you have already got the new interface for opportunities. Uh, it looks like this. And so we're pretty excited about that. That's coming out in 2013.4. Some of you are already in beta on that. OK, so the next thing that I want to talk about is something that you've made loud and clear to us, and that is our client. Yes, we're going to the browser, but what we've heard loud and clear from you is that, hey, look, you guys put out a new client and use up a lot of memory. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but. Hey, look, you know, heads you win, tails you try again, right? Uh, so, so we're modifying that. We're basically making it so that the browser, so that, so that the ConnectWise client is going to use about one fifth of the memory that it's using today. And beyond that, it's faster. So we're excited about that. And I guess I'm kind of a, a stickler about proving it rather than just saying it, right? So this is actually that new client. It's not 100% done yet, so we can't put it out. It will be in beta in December. 
So we're getting right on this, all right? The idea is for us to make it faster. You can see that this is faster. This uses just a fraction of the memory. Those of you that have 32-bit workstations, right now we're saying, you know, you can only open up four tabs. And let me talk about tabs for a second. How many people use four or more tabs in ConnectWise? What are you doing? <laughs> you really think you can multitask that much? All right, wait, let's just do this. How many people use six or more tabs open? Seven. Eight. Nine. Well, I went down to nine. OK. I don't know about you. I can't multitask that much. So, but, but hey, it's what you want. We hear you loud and clear. It's what we're going to do. So back to the 32-bit client right now, we're limiting you to four tabs. We're taking that limit away. You'll have as many tabs as you want again in December, OK? So this is actually that client working. And just wanted to give you a quick little demo just to show you it's pretty darn quick and way less memory. So we're excited about that. And I just wanted to point out that we do hear you, we do listen, we know what is important to you. The next piece that I want to talk about, because I think this is a very significant and important piece of where technology is going today, is mobile. Now, my two sons are here today, Arnold and Peter. And I've watched them grow up. They're in their 20s now. I've watched them grow up. But I've watched them grow up on something I never had, which is games and game controllers. And the thing that I was always astonished when I watched them growing up is that they could play on this thing forever. And they had a blast. And they would learn everything about football because they used to play that NCAA college football program night and day, night and day, night and day. But what was interesting about watching them grow up was they were a, almost addicted to these games and the game controller. And you know, if you think about where it's going today, what I did is when they hit about the age of 20, I gave them iPhones. They didn't want iPhones at first. They said, I don't want that. That's not cool. It's like, no, I want you to have an iPhone because I think, I think you're going to love it. And what happened is they absolutely are dealing with their iPhones almost the same way they dealt with those game controllers. And I guess from what I've seen in my own family, I imagine you've seen the same thing. How is it that mobile is not really becoming a mobile device, not becoming your game controller to life? I mean, they're both in college, and I can, you know, they'll, they'll text me, I need money. And I'll go, oh, hang on a second. <laughs> OK, I just put 100 bucks in your account. Couldn't do that a couple years ago. That's phenomenal. Texting. Phenomenal. Email on there, phenomenal. And I believe that every application that you use should be down on a mobile device and it should be there in a significant way. And so I think that the mobile device is where we need to take ConnectWise. And so we've done a lot of work on that and I wanna, I'm excited to show you some of what we've done there. Okay. I have no idea where I am. <laughs> OK. You guys getting that feed? It's not what's on my phone. Can you, are you guys picking this up? No? Yes. All right. Good. Let's see if you're really picking it up. Yes. All right. Good. All right. So. Yeah, I like live demos. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing is believing, right? So here what we're looking at is we're looking at a brand new screen, the sales dashboard screen. And if you take a look at this, I can see Andy Bell here, and I can see what opportunities he has open, which ones he has, which ones he's lost. Now this, what we've done with mobile is we've made this an incredibly useful tool for salespeople in the field. The ability for them to create new opportunities, the ability for them to easily add products to it and change those opportunities, the ability for them to look at their sales dashboard and figure out where they are up against their quota, where they are up against their quarter to date quota. Because we believe that sales is absolutely the most important thing.
going into the future. If you think about $3.8 trillion worth of spending in IT, we want you to become great at sales, and we want you to get your fair share of that. And so we think mobile is one of the ways that we can make that simpler and easier. Again, it's the game controller to your life. So let's go ahead and take a look at Andy's open opportunities. You can see all of them. Let's go ahead and go into Bell South. What I'm able to do here is very quickly take a look at everything that's on there. And I can say, all right, you know what? I want to add to that. Let me go ahead and add a new product to this because I'm at the client site and the client's telling me they want some new workstations. So let's go ahead and find that. We do have to do, uh-oh, oh, there we go. So let's go ahead and add a new workstation. They need two new workstations. Let's just put in two new workstations and we're done. And we've just added two new workstations to their opportunity and it's automatically updating ConnectWise back at your office or in the cloud. And here you've got those two new on there. Forecast has been updated. I can also come right over here and take a look at Lori Anderson. Obviously can make a phone call to her or get an address by clicking on that. I'm not going to bother you with that. But one of the cool things that we've done here is we've added the ability for you to take this and to export it directly to your phone. We think that's cool. The other thing we've given you the ability is to come in here and to uh, create new tickets and a new opportunity from here as well. So the whole idea is that there's no reason a salesperson wouldn't be able to use this out in the field. But here's the next thing that we've done that I think is really cool. Not only have we given you the ability to look at it individually, but we've given you the ability to actually look at your sales teams. So let's look at our sales team. Let's go ahead and take a look at the US Central sales team. So if you're a sales manager and you've got a team of salespeople, we actually have made it so that you can actually see what they are doing as well. So with one click as a sales manager, I've got all the information right here. Okay, it's about getting the information to the people who can make a difference, who can manage it and create accountability, right? It's all about accountability. So let's take a look at the open opportunities and I can see these are the salespeople in that territory, Andy, Earl, Linda, Pat, and again, simply go in. We're now looking at Andy's open opportunities. If I'm a sales manager, I can come in here, I can open this up, and I can also uh, automatically look at activities on there. I can update it for him. I can create an activity for him if I wanted to. So it's that simple. Let's go ahead and take a look at the activities that are on this opportunity. So you can see, we're bringing all of this right down to the phone. And you can see we've got a new user interface on this as well. So we think mobile is really the future, and we're excited about that. I guess the last thing, because I kind of geek out on this, I've got to show you one more thing. Contacts. I love this. We're giving you the ability to actually import your contacts from Facebook or LinkedIn or from your contacts on your phone to bring them straight in. So let's go ahead and I will bring in, who do I want to bring in? Bring in Bob Berry. So it's saying, I don't see Bob Berry's uh, company. Let's go ahead and search for it. And continue to search for it. and continue to search for it. <laughs> I think I'm competing with everyone else for this here, for bandwidth here. <laughs> and this is why people don't do live demos. All right, we're gonna let it do its thing there. Oh, you don't, what? <laughs> that's not what I got. No, you guys can't get me back? No? You guys lost me. All right. 
Can you guys establish the connection again here? No? All right. OK. So lots of new things there. See if you can get it working. I'll bring it back if you can, OK? All right. Let's get it connected to the screen there. OK. What else have we done? What else improvements have we made? Well, we think that. Well, we know that 70% of our new partners are going straight into the cloud. They're not actually putting the application on premise. Now, we don't care. You can go into the cloud or you can go on premise. It's your choice. We're all about choices. What we've done is we've actually made a fully redundant cloud. And we've done that with our European cloud, our Australian cloud, and we're rolling that out in our North American cloud as well. So we're actually providing right now five nines uptime. And with this redundancy, that we're bringing to, we've already brought it to Europe, we've already brought it to Australia, we're bringing this to North America. This is gonna, gonna ensure that your system is always hot and up and ready. And so we've really devised a whole new cloud architecture that we're very excited about that has proven itself to be incredibly strong and incredibly fast in both Europe and Australia. And so we're bringing that to North America and you will see that by the end of this year. So any of you that are in the North American cloud, you're gonna see a, a speed boost uh, and you're going to be hot redundant. And I want to say that nobody that I know of that we compete with has that, OK? Uh, everyone else relies on backup, uh, but we're actually going to be a hot redundant cloud. All right. Oh, you got me back. OK, good. Back to mobile. So it can't find Raymond James. Let's go ahead and create the company. So we've actually created the company and the contact, and Bob is in our system. And he's in the system not only for, uh, not only for mobile, obviously he's up in the main app as well. So the idea here is for you to be able to do what you need to do out in the field, either as a salesperson or as a technician, directly on the mobile device. All right. We've done a lot of work. Another thing that we've put out recently, and this is a new cool thing that we're pretty excited about, is we have a new concept. It's called ConnectWise Labs. And we create all kinds of cool stuff that we want to give you, but we're not sure if it's right. We're not sure if it's something that we should be selling because we're not 100% done with it. If you look at Google, Google's got labs, right? Uh, and so you can always add their labs to your application and use those, but they're just not supported. They're unsupported, but they're still awesome. So what we did is we actually created this, and it's, and it's free, and we're giving it to you, a website connector. What we think is we think that your website is your business. We think that's the front doors to your business. That's how we see it. And so we feel it's important for you to be able to create any forms on your website. And when, when your prospect or client hits submit on that form on your website, that will automatically push that information directly into ConnectWise. And so what we've done is we've given, we've started off with this. You can actually find this website connector. This will generate forms, okay? This first version is free. It is unsupported but it's completely documented and it's completely awesome. The only thing I would tell you is that the version that we have out there right now will only work on an IIS web server, okay? Sorry, it's a lab. <laughs> That's why it's not a product yet. But we'd love you to take a look at that and try that. We think it's pretty awesome. Another thing that we've done is we've really spent a lot of time this year integrating accounting systems. And so we actually integrate to all of these and more accounting systems. But what we've done is we've gone through all of the accounting integrations and we've standardized them so that you can synchronize accounts receivable information right back into ConnectWise. So that when you create an invoice in ConnectWise and you pass it to your accounting system, not just with QuickBooks, not just with QuickBooks Online, but Mass 90, Mass 200, Sage 50, Sage 100, 
all of these, Zero is a new popular product that's out there. MYOB is a very popular product that's in Australia. And so we've added a number of features, the ability for it to automatically create companies in your accounting system, the, the ability for it to synchronize accounts receivable information back to your invoices in ConnectWise. And we pass lots more information over. So I guess I would say to some of you partners that are on uh, some of these products and maybe you did your accounting integration a long time ago, you might want to go out to the marketplace and take a look at all of the new accounting integrations that we have and you might want to upgrade to one of these new accounting integrations because you're going to pass more information and your ConnectWise system now can be very well integrated to your accounting system. So we think that's really important. So if you, if you haven't looked at it recently, please take a look at it, all right? Those of you that are on QuickBooks, you're automatically getting that, okay? Uh, but if you want to go to QuickBooks Online, we have integration to that now as well. You can find that out in the marketplace. Uh, so Zero again, a very popular product. So lots of accounting integrations. The next, the next thing I want to talk about is our success accelerators. Partner kits. We put out a number of partner kits for you. Uh, what are partner kits? Partner kits are things that we put together. These are solutions that we put together, we document, we tell you how to invoke a best practice for service boards, for vendor management, for human resources, and the same. You've seen these, these are already out there. New ones that we've created for you this year are uh, onboarding new clients. We've got a leadership kit now. Uh, we've created a collections kit to help you collect from your customers better, and one for success. And another one, another one that we have coming very soon is HIPAA, because that's a new area of IT that we think you're really going to need to understand better. <laughs> partner kits, if you go to connectwise.com slash partner kits, that's the direct URL. Or obviously, if you go to ConnectWise University, you're going to see them there. Another thing that we've done, we've talked about technology certifications in the past. We've made that even less expensive for you. And now these technology certifications, so th if you think about it, I don't know if all of you know about this, but we actually provide you the ability to get certified on ITIL, on Cisco, on Microsoft, all of those classes that your technicians need to keep them up to date on new technology are available through our technology certifications. And we've made this even more affordable. It's only $125 a student a quarter. And the cool thing is we now have 24-7 online mentors. So if your people are getting stuck, they can actually chat with an expert to help them understand the concepts that they're struggling with. And if you think about it, it's like we got to, we have to keep our technicians up to date. We have to stay up with the latest and greatest technologies. It's absolutely an imperative. Another thing that we added, we've done so much work in the past year. We're asking you to understand ConnectWise and to get your people certified on ConnectWise. So we've created certification programs so that you can get your sales managers, is what I would recommend, certified in ConnectWise, proper use of it. I know how you basically sit there and you buy ConnectWise, you implement ConnectWise, and then the place where you don't succeed is we don't get buy-in from your people. The way you can get buy-in from your people is to get them certified. In other words, it's basically study hall for them. Instead of you forcing it, we'll do it. And we're going to do it right now. We've decided we're doing it free for the next six months, and we may just do it free forever. If you don't want to get your people certified, or you're saying, I don't want to do that, OK, I get that. Maybe you're a one or two or three person shop, and you're saying, I can't take the time to even get certified. I'm, I'm, I'm chasing everything seven ways from Sunday. That's OK. Let us be your virtual ConnectWise administrator. This is a new program that we're putting out as well. So if you don't want your people, or you don't have time to really manage ConnectWise the right way, or fully implement it, or continue to stay updated with all the new things that we're putting out and how it can benefit your company, then let us do it. We're doing this through our consulting team. It's virtual administrators. We're going to spend, we're basically, if you don't want to be a ConnectWise admin, let us do it for you. That's all we're saying. And so this is a new program that we're putting together as well. It's $865 a month. 
If I could do it less expensive, I would. We're basically doing this at break even. But this is, again, another service that we're putting in place to help boost your success. Again, that's all we care about. It's not just about the software. It's about you following best practice. It's about you following processes that will make you successful. If you're not doing it for yourself, let us do it for you. And if that's not enough, then just hire us as a consultant. We've got an incredible consulting staff. They've got over, believe it or not, over 160 years of IT experience and 85 years of ConnectWise experience. So it's a phenomenal thing. And the, the rave reviews that we're getting back from you, our partners, are amazing. So realize this. It's like you don't have to be a ConnectWise guru. You don't even have to be a business guru. Because honestly, how many of you came into this business as awesome salespeople? Raise your hand. Who's an awesome, who started their business because they said, I'm awesome in sales? Are you serious? What? There's like five hands up, okay? I want you to see that there's only five hands up. You know why? Because first of all, that's okay. We're all the same. We came into this industry because we love technology. We love what technology can do. We get geeked out over all the awesome things that technology can do. So guess what? We're not really very good at sales. That's the way it goes. And quite honestly, we're not necessarily all very good at running a business. Because as I told Jim Collins and we were talking last year, it's like most of us are accidental entrepreneurs. I know I am, and I know a lot of you are. I got into this business because I love technology. And my boss at Price Waterhouse told me I couldn't play around with microcomputers, told me I had to go consult on mainframes and mini computers, and charge me out at 125 bucks an hour. And the PC came out in 1982, and that was my resignation letter right there, because I geeked out on it so much, because I loved it so much, and I thought, this is going to change the world. This is going to make such a big difference. This is power to the people. And you did the same thing. At some point in your career, you geeked out over technology, and you got excited about it. And then you got a couple clients, then you had to get your first employee, and your second, and all of a sudden you're going, oh crud, I gotta run a whole business now. And I've gotta actually sell stuff to make sure that everybody's busy. We get that. We're you, we understand that. But we can make you better at sales. In fact, I would recommend anybody who is interested in sales, Chartech, go talk to them at their booth. They have a phenomenal sales solution sales training. They know that we're all basically technologists, but we can all become good salespeople. We can all invoke good sales process. And all the processes in your business, help desk, knock, collections, and so many other processes inside of your company, we can help you with that with our consulting staff. So please, let us help you. Let us help you get a higher level of success. And let's just take a look at some of our consultants. Hi, my name is Kay Vanderleest, and I am a senior business consultant here at ConnectWise. Hi, I'm Tom Krim. I'm a business consultant with ConnectWise. Hi, my name is Janine Sullivan. I'm a senior business consultant at ConnectWise. Hello, I'm Craig Fulton. I'm a senior business consultant at ConnectWise. One of the interesting things is when I do on-site engagements, especially with the business audits, it's just that people start getting into their day-to-day -day business and they don't get to really take advantage of all of the functionality within ConnectWise, especially as we roll new things out. And what I typically hear from partners when I go in a consulting engagement is I'm using 10% of ConnectWise, I'm using 15%. They always feel they're using a very small amount and I like helping them get the most out of it. One of my favorite things about being a ConnectWise business consultant is spending time with our partners. My favorite part about being a consultant and working with partners is the opportunity to engage with really smart people. My favorite part of being a ConnectWise business consultant is getting to meet people one-on-one. -on -one. I know that I can put them at ease and I know that by the time I leave, they will be very, very happy. My favorite thing about being a, a ConnectWise business consultant is the fact that I get a sense of accomplishment 
every day. At ConnectWise, our why is partner success. At ConnectWise, our why is partner success. So if consulting isn't enough, I want to also emphasize that our support team has expanded tremendously. This is our first shift. We are on three shifts. We do 24-7 support now. And these people are eager to help you in any way that they can. So take advantage of that. The other thing that we've really boosted this past year is our account management team. Our account management team is where you have a personal relationship with someone at ConnectWise. And we're expanding that group by 50% this year so that we can become more personal, understand your business, and be in touch with you that much better. Because we think that's the most important thing. Because we know we have the answers for you, we just have to connect you to that success. And by the way, all of this information that I've been talking about, you can find in ConnectWise University. And if you look at your ConnectWise application, in the top right-hand corner, you're going to see a university link. Click there, and you're just one more click away from all of this information, the marketplace, how you can find your account manager. You just put in your zip code, and we'll tell you, here's your account manager. But your account manager will be calling you, so we'll be proactive on that as well. But if you're ever struggling with ConnectWise or, going, or getting frustrated with us or possibly suffering in silence, please talk to your account manager. Please call us. Let us know, OK? All of these. So if you look through here, go to the university, absolutely everything is there. Integration. The next piece that I want to talk about is our integration and the efforts that we put in, in integration. So we have a number of APIs. We think this is the way that we can allow ConnectWise to be extend, extended and expanded by anyone, any vendor. In fact, you, the partners, many of you have signed up for these APIs and have created your own really cool integrations to it. What we've done is we've taken APIs, we're adding new ones all the time, but the cool thing that we've done this year, we've actually taken them all and packaged them all together and put them into a much easier way to consume these APIs in a software development kit. So what does that mean? That means more integration and less time, simpler. Uh, how many folks have created integration to ConnectWise out there? We've made it simpler. So we're excited about that. Uh, some great examples of some people who have created integration. Obviously, the lab tech folks have done a phenomenal job with integrating absolutely everything, discovering devices, uh, all kinds of devices down on your network and bringing those in as configurations to ConnectWise. They've gone even further. They've used this software development kit. And by the way, this is an open software development kit. Anybody can do, you know, when we talk about the modern office suite, anybody can take advantage of these integrations and do the same things that any of these companies are doing, Quozel or LabTech. But what's great about it is we're pushing that innovation curve and we're bringing new and better ideas to you through these integrations. And as we discover what needs to be done, we add to those integration points. We add to those APIs. Another very cool thing that we're doing future is future-proofing. So what do I mean by future-proofing? Future-proofing, the world we're entering into now, we believe, is going to be user-centric. So if you look at that typical client there, you're going to see that there's tons and tons of devices out there, right? And that's how we bill and that's how we manage today, is by the device. But what we think is happening and what we know is happening, based on the partners that we're talking to, is that it's really going to a user-centric billing method. It's going to the point where, hey, look, Jackie has five different devices, you know, an iPad, a mobile device, a notebook, a desktop, goes on and on. You can't really necessarily bill by device anymore, so you're going to have to bill by user, and you're going to have to manage by user. And so this is something that we're working on very hard this year to allow you to be able to manage at the user level. And so one of the things you're going to see in the third quarter of this year is we're going to have the ability to scan a network and bring in your contacts. Uh, we'll be able to understand what devices they have. Uh, we'll be able to create a bill for you. Uh, 
And by the way, it's not just the users. It's not just a user-centric world. The new world that we're heading into is a user-centric world where they're talking to cloud applications. Yeah, they're still going to have applications under the roof, but the reality is, is there's going to be all of these cloud applications that they connect to. So the new world, you almost want to look at it like this, where you're looking at users and you're looking at what applications they're using. Some of them may be under the roof at their location, but a lot of them are out there in the cloud, right? So it's billing by user and then understanding the services that they're using and deploying those services, and we're working on all of those things to bring to you uh, by the end of next year. Third quarter is what we've got that scheduled for. And the net result of all of that is a user-centric bill. So the idea would be you would be able to actually create a bill that would look something like this that is billing by user. Another cool project that we're working on right now is a product called BizDocs. They're a brand new company. They're a brand new uh, modern office company. Uh, we made an investment in BizDocs. It's an, it's an existing partner. It was an existing partner of ours, Ricky Phipps. And Ricky's come up with some pretty amazing stuff. And we want to show you this now because the bottom line is none of us do a very good job of documenting our clients or our client systems. And by the way, this documentation isn't just about networks, it's about bus documenting the business and business processes, and it goes much further than just a network diagram. But wouldn't you love to have this kind of a network diagram for every single one of your partners? Oh, you're not showing money anymore. All right, let's go to the BizDoc uh, demo. Thanks, Arnie. How many people love doing documentation? Show of hands. Yeah, that's what I thought. How many people still using Visio to do their documentation? All right, so almost the entire room. Let me show you a better way. So what I want to do is, you know, Arnie just talked about APIs. And so I want to leverage one of those APIs right now to actually go gather some information out of ConnectWise. So we're going to go out and talk to, the, talk to ConnectWise. We're going to pull some information in. The first thing I'm going to grab is the foundation, the network. So I found some gateways out there. I've got my network information. Next. It's actually going to find all of the physical servers, right? So based on the information that we've gathered, it knows what all the physical machines are. Now, of course, one of our challenges is always figuring out which guest is on which host. Well, we've gathered that information as well. So now we've mapped out all our physical and virtual servers. We have the base beginnings of our network. We can preview our import. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and confirm it. And that lays the foundation for what we're going to show you now. One of these. This is great. Actually, using the information in ConnectWise, it builds our network host architecture diagram. Not only that, but we can actually drill in and start to get more information off these particular devices. I know what operating system, the type of hardware that this is. I even know what roles are available. So it's a great way to document everything that's going on inside your customer. I even see there's redundant internet connections. So when they call me and they say, you know, my, it's, the internet's really, really slow. Well, I can actually drill down and look, well, it's a 25 meg connection, so it must be something else. It's just a lot of great information we can document, things that we're missing today. Now, let's take that up a layer. So a lot of us get the Visio diagrams done. But what about all the applications that your customers are using, right? So we know there's a lot of things that they are consuming that we're not documenting, things like file sharing, backups, AV and anti-spyware uh, things. Uh, websites, web filtering, there's a, a host of things, a bevy of things that we're actually doing that we're not necessarily documenting. Documenting their services, what are they actually consuming? Now we can start to play the what if game. Well, if a service is unavailable or an application is down, what does that mean to my customer? And so now we can actually do things like some risk assessment. So now I can drill down a little bit and I can see, well, let's take a look at what this risk actually is. And we can see that on our exchange server and our email service, this server's out of warranty. Now, what does that mean to the customer? Server's out of warranty? Great, it's running, I don't care. Well, let me show you what that means. Right now, if that email service goes down, 16 people are at risk in this office for a work stoppage at a cost to the customer of almost $740 an hour. Well, how do we get that information? Well, this is we're documenting the business. We're documenting our client. So we're documenting the roles that are in our client, the people that are in those roles, 
even the costs associated to those roles so that we can start to play that what if game. Well, if I'm going to change that switch out, what does that mean to my customer? If this, this priority service goes down, how much is that going to cost you in a work stoppage? So that's a better way to do documentation. That's BizDocs. Awesome. Thank you very much, Bill. We're really excited about this because we think this is a place that we can really help you. This is a sales tool. Not only is it a documentation, documentation tool, but it's really a sales tool, if you think about it, because playing those what if games, that's really designed for you to take those and work with those right in front of your customer, right? Bring those to your customer. Show them the actual financial impact. Again, we're trying to give you tools to make you better at sales, and the reality is, you know, when it comes to sales, you're really just consulting. So I know a lot of you think sales is a dirty word. Nobody ever buys anything that they don't want, okay? You're a great consultant. You can advise them on what they need to get, and this is a great tool to help them see the benefits of that. Another very, very exciting thing that we're doing and we're working on, and we're going to be delivering the first pieces of this to you uh, in early 2014 is what we call Modern Office Communicator. And what is that? Imagine for a second that you were able to communicate with every one of your clients, every one of the users at your client. You know, if you think about it, the reality is, is that they are really who we're supporting, but we do it remotely so we don't actually get to get in front of them all the time because so much of this work can be done across the internet. And by the way, more and more of it is going to be done across the internet. So we think that requires us to still create a relationship between you and your customer because it's all about relationships. Everything is about a relationship in this industry, in any industry, in any partnership. It's about a relationship. So we're losing that relationship because we're kind of this thing out there in the cloud now, 90% of the time, taking care and remediating issues, all right? But imagine for a second if we actually could communicate to every one of those customers. And imagine for a second that we had the presence information of whether they are sitting at their desk or not. And that we bring that directly to you inside of ConnectWise and we show you on your service boards, hey, by the way, green, the person who raised this issue is available right here, right now. If you think about that for a second, and it takes a little while to get there, it's pretty amazing. Imagine if we also take that and we bring that out directly into LabTech. You're going to see presence information right there to be able to know whether you can maybe reboot the machine or chat with that person about the issue that they raised. Imagine if your salespeople understood presence of the people that they're sending quotes to. So they could say, hey, look, let me review this with you. Because no one lets you review a quote with them in person anymore. So what if, what if, what if we were able to open up a pipe through the internet that would allow you to communicate with them, not only with chat, but with voice and video? I'm going way out there, but the reality is that's where everything's going. So we're working on making that a reality today. And imagine for a second that I talked to you earlier about how awesome it is that websites basically, uh, I guess I'll ask it to you this way. Where is your business? Where are you located? How many of you immediately said, well, I'm right up on Bush Boulevard? Right? That's not where you're located. Your location is your website. The way people do business with you anymore and into the future is going to be strictly through your website. They don't come to your office. They don't visit you. You don't even go out to them anymore. That relationship is going to die if we don't do something about it. We want you to have that personal relationship, and that's what Modern Office Communicator is. And the main thing that it will do is it will incredibly compress SLAs and response time. Imagine if I could, from a ticket, from an existing ticket, instantly pop up and talk with the client at the other end and remediate that problem. The biggest problem we have is all the delays. Emails back and forth, phone calls back and forth, oh, you're not there, I'm not there. 
how about if I know you're there? How about if I know you're there and I, I then communicate with you? That's what we think the future holds and that's what we're working on. So let's take a look at it. Uh, this is Craig Fulton. Thank you, Craig, for coming out. And let's go ahead and do a demo of the first piece of this that we'll have ready the very early part of 2014. All right, thanks, Arnie. So we can see here, I'm a technician working on a help desk. I'm logged into the Modern Office Communicator. I have the ability to work in a queue. I could chat up with how many, how many customers I like, three to five. But what stands us apart is the ability to have presence, as Arnie stated. I'm saying I'm available to chat. I have existing tickets that I'm working on. And my customer also has that presence. And as you can see on the other screens, they see that I'm available to chat with them. So anytime the customer can go ahead and if I'm logged in and I'm available, they're going to start that chat with me. So they'll go ahead and type something on over and the chat will come up. What's nice is I've got my ticket also displayed here. I see that Ed is now communicating with me. It's keeping track of all the time, all the notes, everything I'm typing. If I have LabTech integrated, we know that I could come down, look at the configurations attached here. I can click Manage. As I'm chatting, their computer console will come up. And so I'm going to start doing some basic troubleshooting behind the scenes as I'm chatting with them, as I'm working with several customers. So in this case, I'll just restart their print spooler, come back to our chat. That's going to check that for me. Everything's working. The customer's probably pretty amazed that I was able to take care of their issue without taking control of their screen and slowing their productivity. Once I'm finished with the chat, it's going to go ahead and record the notes and the time against the ticket, get it closed out for me, and I'll move on to the next chat session. <laughs> Thank you very much, Greg. Okay. That's awesome. So that's really cool, but if you add the ability to open up an audio communication with them or an audio and video communication with them, now it's got become personal again. Now all of a sudden you're right there in front of them, and that's where we're going with this. So we're really excited about all of these things that we're bringing to you. And I guess what I would tell you is, you know, we really do care. We really care about your success. We work very hard to create ways for you to be more successful. It's not just about software. It's about best practices. It's about getting you into the opportunities that we think are out there in this new world that we're heading to. And we will continue to do anything and everything necessary to create success for you. We'll innovate. We'll integrate. We'll do whatever it takes. And we're always looking out into the future, trying to figure out what we need to do next. And we're always looking out there trying to say, what problems will they have a year from now, two years from now, three years from now? And we solve for those today. So I shared with you a lot of the things that we've been working on. I shared with you a lot of the problems that we see. I shared with you the future trends. And as far as I'm concerned, the bottom line is this is a brand new world that we're heading into and you have to be successful. We need you to be successful. We want you to be successful. I will tell you that what we're going to be doing is we're going to do anything and everything necessary to make that a reality for you. And if you do, like I did when, you, when I swam the English Channel, and you really are willing to face yourself, I think you're going to find that the future is going to be absolutely phenomenal for you. And I guess I would just say, it is your world. This is your world. What are you going to do with it? This is your world. You are the IT specialist. You are the technologist. You are bringing that technology boost. What are you going to do with the world that's coming right to you, right to you? We want you to be successful, and we want you to 
know that we will do anything and that we very much care about you guys. So with that, I wish you an awesome IT nation. Thank you very much.